Yo, um, so this video is going to be on the installing of shock tower reinforcements. Um, if you don't know what those are, shock tower reinforcements are, um, and basically what they fucking sound like, uh, they, they're just thick pieces of metal that you fit into your shock tower and you weld them in and it uh, reinforces that whole area. Um, yeah, so again, I'm not a professional, I'm just some like guy in a garage, so uh, I'm not claiming this is like the proper way to do it, I'm just documenting how I did it. All right, so the first thing I did is cut out a cardboard template because I didn't want to start messing with the metal right away, just in case I ended up grinding off a little too much. Um, yeah, first thing I did is just take off a little bit of stuff. Took off this. Took off really just the tiniest bit. All right, so I've done a lot of back and forth. Um, I actually hardly used the cardboard, uh, but. Anyway, I think this is like pretty much where I want it. Uh, I had the most trouble, I think, on this edge. Um, this is pretty good, I think. I'd even take any metal off here. Now, my only problem is this big gap. I don't know if you guys can see it. Um, there's not much I can do. I didn't even take any metal off here. I mean, so this edge, I'm probably gonna have to bend. So maybe I'll draw a line from here to here-ish and bend it down a little bit, sit flush. All right, so I've kind of marked it where I think I need to bend it. Oh no, let's let's bend it and see see how it comes out. All right, um, here's what I come up with. I want to use this to actually do the bend, but I want to brace it right here so like this whole thing doesn't get bent. Uh, now I happen to have these pieces of scrap metal. All right, I think. I am satisfied with that. So just a good amount of space. But oh, watch these grips not fit. Oh. Alright, that was just a very slight bend. Let's go see if it fits. Right. Clearly there's some more bending to do. So I think this is a little better, but I'm gonna leave it here for now. Now that I got this pretty much where I want it, I'm just gonna go ahead and scribe a line where the welds are gonna be so I know where to remove the paint. Oh shit. Good enough. All right, so I've got the paint off where the welds are gonna be, and I decided to seam seal just cut just for fun really I didn't need to do that I don't think um, and these holes are called weep holes and you're supposed to leave them because they're supposed to help uh, let moisture out although one the one thing I don't get about that is don't they let moisture in but anyway they say to to leave them alone so uh, now it's probably fine if I weathered it just like this uh, but I do want to give it some extra protection so I picked up some of this it's not that expensive I've been curious about it so I'm just gonna give it a try um, and then it'll be ready to weld. All right, I just put the export brace on, which I wanted to do first before welding this in. Uh, just a real quick recap, recap on what I've done so far. Um, so first of all, I've trimmed and bent this to fit, primed, seam sealed, and painted this area because I wanna protect it from rust and I won't have access to it after it's welded in. Same with this backside, primed and painted, and of course I kept the edges as clean as I can. Uh, oh, another thing I've done is I've beveled the edges, kind of like at a 45 degree angle. Um, oof, I don't know, kind of hard to catch on camera, but that's just so that when it's sitting down, it'll be easier for the weld. To, it's got like, creates a valley for the weld. Yeah, I'm just about to get it tacked in now.
Yeah. All right, so I've gotten a few more tacks in. Um, I'm having a little trouble with these gaps here. All right, uh, I've started to run beads, um, but only a very small amount at a time. Uh, they're not great, but I am getting better. Uh, so what I want to do now is that now that I've got like these two solid beads here, I want to hammer this in and get it uh, to sit more flat. That's as good as I'm gonna get it. Uh, it could be better, but I think this is fine. So I'm, I think I'm ready to call it. Uh, I did go ahead and fill up the holes that were left, ground this down, and tried, tried again. Wasn't that successful. Um, I did go around and lightly grind uh, the welds to get rid of the little spatter balls. I didn't get everything, but it doesn't really matter. All right, so here's the other side. Uh, I did it a little differently because the whole shock tower wasn't painted. So all I did was trace the outline and then paint right under that. Yeah, so I'll just go ahead and get this cleaned up and then tack it in. Just like the other side, I did bevel the edges um, so the welds have a nicer place to sit. Um, of course, I'm going to clean all this up and I painted the other side as well. Set this in now. All right. on this huge gap in the middle. Uh, but now I'm gonna do it like I did on the other side and just hammer this area and hammer this area uh, get them to sit down a little more. on this one now. Hopefully it comes out good. So I have finished this side. Um, I had a lot of trouble in this corner. You can see it's like, looks horrible. Um, it's cause I blew a couple holes. And then to fix that, I was too afraid to use too much heat, you know? So I just had to do a bunch of short tacks. Um, I am pretty happy with the sides. This and this. Um, this corner was went all right. Uh, 
Now this middle part definitely took a lot of time, but I'm actually happy with the way it came out because what I did was I just did a bunch of like C shapes to uh, bridge the gap. I just did this a little bit at a time uh, and it came out like really thick and uh, good, I think. Um, and the edges are right. Uh, by the way, there there are two lips on the frame rail, and so I've had the dog bone welded completely over one of those one of those lips, so you can still kind of see the second. Um, so it looks like it's not fully welded, but it, but it is. It's completely welded to this this lip. Um, so anyway, yeah, guess I'm done.